Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, the time has finally come. After 5 years of waiting, we finally have the Super Mario Bros. movie. And let me just say right here, the critics are wrong. They are so wrong. The Super Mario movie is such a great watch. It's a love letter to Mario fans and packed of so many references and fun moments. Before I begin, there will be spoilers in this video, so I highly suggest that you watch the movie before you watch this video. I went into the Mario movie spoiler free and I'm so glad I watched it that way. Now that that's out of the way, let's begin. So I went into this movie with low expectations. I was almost sure that the plot would be a disaster and it would just be fan service to the audience, especially because Illumination is the studio who partnered with Nintendo to make this movie. And everyone knows the kind of movies Illumination makes. But no, I was completely wrong. This movie isn't a Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, or a Spider-Verse. It's not good enough to be one of those but it's a classic film that you'll find yourself revisiting time and time again for some nostalgia, a good laugh, and memorable characters. The plot is very simple and straightforward. Mario and Luigi are plumbers in Brooklyn trying to get a client. The pipe system in Brooklyn is flooding the streets, so the brothers are like, wait, this is our chance to get recognized, so they go to investigate the pipes. And, as you can expect, one of the pipes sucks them in and transports them to the world of Mario. They get separated, however, and Luigi goes to the Darklands, while Mario goes to the Mushroom Kingdom. From there, the plot is essentially to save Luigi and stop Bowser from destroying the Mushroom Kingdom now that he has a power star. Peach is a girl boss in this movie and helps Mario train and save his brother. Toad also comes along with Mario on this adventure, and he's a nice little comic relief. Peach decides to go to the Donkey Kong Kingdom first, to try to get the Kong army to help them, since the Toads obviously cannot defeat Bowser. The King, who is Cranky Kong by the way, doesn't form an alliance with them except if someone can defeat his son, Seth Rogen, aka Donkey Kong. So Mario, being the impulse that he is, decides to go against Donkey Kong in a Super Smash Bros-esque battle. For the sake of the plot, obviously he wins, they all build some Mario Karts and go on the Rainbow Road to the Mushroom Kingdom. But uh-oh, Bowser anticipates their moves and ambushes them. Mario falls off of the road of DK and they get eaten by a Moray eel. Which I actually think is a cool reference because an eel was in a Mario Kart level with dolphins in it or something like that. The Kong army gets captured by Bowser's minions and put in cages over lava just like Luigi. DK's cart had barrels attached to it and in the eel the cart still had one barrel left. So they use that to get out of the eel and fly on over to the Mushroom Kingdom Donkey Kong Tropical Freestyle just in time for Peach's wedding with Bowser. Oh yeah, Bowser's whole motivation is to marry Princess Peach, just like in Super Mario Odyssey. I think it was a good idea for that to be in the movie since it's the newest game that everyone is familiar with. And also it was just hilarious the whole time. Mario and DK crash the wedding, save Peach and the prisoners who are about to be burned alive in lava, and then Bowser fires a bullet bill. Mario lures the bullet bill away from the Mushroom Kingdom and puts it through the pipe that goes to Brooklyn, and it blows up in there. My brain cells are not working as I currently write this script, but I'm pretty sure that by blowing up in the tube, the bullet bill transports everyone and everything from the Mario Kingdom into Brooklyn? Not sure how that works, but okay. There's an epic final battle in Brooklyn that Mario's family gets to witness and the dad stops being disappointed in him, which by the way, was a plot point at the beginning of the movie that they never revisited until now. Luigi and Mario finally get to team up and they use the superstar that Bowser stole. With it, they are able to defeat Bowser and shrink him into a tiny turtle. Even though the plot is really easy to follow and there's no plot twists or anything like that, I still had a lot of fun watching this movie. There's just something about sitting in a room full of Mario fans and hearing people next to you pointing out all the references and trying not to scream when you see an easter egg. I have a bit of criticism for this movie though. For one, I think Luigi should have been a bigger part of the movie. He kind of just disappears for 30 minutes and pretty much half the movie he's in a cage captured by Bowser hanging over lava. They really did him dirty. And the whole nothing can hurt us when we're together sometimes is kind of forgotten. But overall, I really like how they did remember at least in the end to bring back that plot point and give Luigi a chance to shine in character development. The brotherly bond between Luigi and Mario is actually really touching in the moments that it is brought up. It makes me wish they put more emphasis on that. The biggest problem in this movie for me is the character development and pacing. The plot is very fast and they do not waste time getting to each location to move the plot forward. There's not really enough breathing room, and I think everyone can agree with that. The movie spends too much time trying to cram in references to the point where there's no time to stop and think. I thought this could have been adjusted so that way more characters would get actual development and we could see more of the Mario universe. A lot of the problems would be fixed if the runtime was longer. As soon as Mario is done with the training course and goes to fight Donkey Kong, it feels like he's a master of fighting already and suddenly he can do anything. 
I really wish they could have done something more with Luigi. He had a ton of potential, but instead they decided to have him disappear for half an hour while the adventure focused mainly on the three protagonists. I just think he was overshadowed too much. There were too little interactions with the characters and not enough time for them to bond. Of course, this is partly due because the movie didn't really focus on that, it focused on moving the plot forward too quickly. But that's enough about the bad stuff, let's move on to the good things about the Super Mario movie. The soundtrack of this movie is legendary. There's so many hidden easter eggs in the music, and I love it. I had so much fun recognizing all the different themes in the games. They played the Captain Toad theme when Toad meets Mario, they played the Bowser theme when he's coming to wreck the Penguin Kingdom, they played the Donkey Kong theme when they get to the Donkey Kong Kingdom, they kept all the original sound effects from the games, and then they played Take On Me, which kind of ruined the immersion, and they also played Holding Out for a Hero. That's totally related to video games. Also, the DK rap is in this movie. Yeah, it actually made it in. Totally did not freak out at the movie theater and almost knocked over my soda. You know, for all the controversy surrounding Chris Pratt voice acting Mario, I actually think he did a great job in this movie. In fact, everyone did a great job in this movie. The voice acting was one of the best parts. I was worried Chris Pratt was going to sound like Emmett, but nope, he made a cool, distinct voice for Mario. At least the original voice of Mario got to voice the Jumpman cameo and Mario's dad. The real star of this movie, though, is Bowser. Man, I love Bowser. See, Disney? This is what we want. Give us back our irredeemable monsters. You've done well with the generational trauma, but please, we want pure evil villains now. Bowser is hysterical. I don't even want to spoil what he does in the film for those of you who ignored my spoiler warning in the beginning. Jack Black as Bowser was meant to be. It is literally the perfect casting choice. He does amazing in this role. Bowser really carried this movie, honestly. The environment and set pieces for the Mario movie were great. I loved the setting in all the different kingdoms. There were lots of cool references hidden in the landscape, and it was fun to point those out. In conclusion, the Mario movie is not a movie for criticism. Sure, maybe it has a thin plot and the characters are not well developed, but it's a movie that every single person from the Mario fandom will enjoy. This movie is an okay movie by itself, but it's amazing as a Mario movie. I left the movie theater feeling satisfied with what I had watched and happy that I had put two hours into enjoying the film. It's a movie to enjoy, not criticize or be logical about. Just a good time to relax with your fellow Mario fans and chill. For being the first animated movie ever to come from Nintendo, they did a good job. And for Illumination standards, this is actually one of their best movies. I really hope that for those who have not seen it, that you will watch it and enjoy it just as much as I did. I can't wait to see it again once it comes out for purchase. This is Isabella Iggyfeather signing out. Thanks for watching!